This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall rock climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. Welcome back to another episode here on The Husband Coach's Corner, where we learn to love our wife every day and become better men in the process. I'm your host, Chris, and today we're going to be unpacking something called delayed gratification. This is a crucial step in building your marriage and becoming the husband that your wife deserves and that you want to be. So, Let's just go ahead and dive right into the content. I don't have much of announcements to to share today. I just want to get right into the content. So let's first understand delayed gratification and what that really looks like in a relationship. I think sometimes we can think about delayed gratification if you've heard of this before in aspects of I know I have to put in the work now to get the thing that I want later, which is essentially what delayed gratification is and what we're talking about here in this episode. Uh, But I do want to hone in on a specific definition and then we'll kind of unpack that. So delayed gratification is the ability to resist the temptation of immediate rewards for the sake of a more significant long term goal. All right. So key words here, resist the temptation And we'll talk about what those temptations could be in our marriage, which, you know, your minds are probably already uh, thinking through what a temptation would be in marriage. But we'll we'll really kind of outline those, demystify and spell them out. But the also immediate reward piece sometimes and I'm guilty of this, right? I want things now. I want things today. And. What I'm hoping that you'll get from this podcast when we get to the action steps is learning how to gauge yourself over weeks, months and years as opposed to day by day. Now, this isn't taken away from the idea that we need to love our wives daily and find a way to love her daily. But that progression is going to happen over time. And that's what the delayed gratification really comes down to. So we're not doing it for the immediate response. Like if you are finding a way to love your wife every day and your wife is happy and that's a good thing for your relationship, I'm happy for you. That's that's perfect. That's, you know, I'm not saying that we don't want her to be happy. However, The reason why we're doing it on a daily basis is for the compound effect, which I've talked about in the past. But the goal here is really to develop over time, because guess what? You're going to find a way to love your wife today, but you guys may end up in an argument and you're going to probably count that day as maybe not beneficial. But in the grand scheme of your marriage and developing and progressing over time, then you're going to see that what you did today, regardless of if it ended in an argument or not, which arguments are actually a good thing in marriage, but I won't dive into that right now. Regardless of if it ends in an argument or not or whatever, if you continue to love your wife every single day, by the end of a week, you're going to be able to see all these opportunities that you had to love and bless your wife. And that you started to build your relationship, even if it's only by 1%. See, the immediate gratification piece will tell you, well, you have to grow your marriage by an exponential amount. And that amount could be anywhere from, well, you should be growing 20 to 40% every week, which, you know, I'm making up a number there, but you get the point that it's this perception that we have to make these drastic changes over time. And really, the drastic change happens gradually. And that's why we're talking about delayed gratification, because there's so many husbands that I've talked with and I've coached that they're looking to rebuild their marriage by the end of the week. And 
if you are listening to this or watching this, whatever you're doing, my hope to you and my recommendation to you is don't look about building your marriage immediately. Look about working on it today and then looking forward to the future of what your marriage can become. And you really never arrive at the perfect marriage. All right. You only grow in building your relationship over time to a point that when you look back, you know, five, 10, 15 years down the line, you see that progression. But when you get there, you know, five, 10 years later and you look back, you should only look back to say, yeah, you know what? We've made it through some things. We went through some seasons, but we have more ahead of us. We have 10, 20 more years ahead of us. You know, Lord willing, you know, we live through those 10, 20 years, whatever it may be. Right. We have the rest of our lives together. And the problem, you know, I, I've said this before. My wife doesn't necessarily care for this phrasing, but it's the truth. If you've ever ran a marathon, it's like that, except for it's a marathon that never ends. And that's not a bad thing because a lot of people, you know, are like, oh, man, marathons uh, it makes my body hurt. Well, yeah, absolutely. But whenever you're running a marathon and I've only ran half marathon, so I'll speak to the half marathon aspect of it. But there's good parts and there's bad parts throughout the, the running. Like for me, whenever I run a half marathon, the first three, four miles feel great. Once I hit around mile five to mile six, my body goes into this uh, not so great feeling. So I slow down. And this is historic over all of my half marathons. I slow down. But then once I get to mile seven and eight, I usually pick back up and then I taper off around miles nine, 10 and 11. But then when I see that finish line in 12 and 13, I get a little bit more energy and I come across the finish line strong. So that's just the way that, you know, my marathon running goes. I'm not like some expert runner. I just do them because they were fun, or at least I did do them. Long story on that. Anyway, the reason I share that is it's like that, but it never ends where you have great seasons and you have not so great seasons. You have great days and you have not so great days. That's how marriage is. That's how any relationship is. And that's OK. Now, let me get off of my soapbox on that. But hopefully that segment and the information I was sharing about the immediate versus the delayed version of gratification uh, made sense, because that's really something that we got to hone in on and pay attention to, because that's how we're going to grow in our marriage. Now, here's the deal. Uh, the other piece that I wanted to hone in on is significant long-term goals. All right. Significant long-term goals. If you're not setting goals in your marriage, you have no idea where you're going. I got to say that again. If you are not setting goals in your marriage, you have no idea where you're going. Now, this isn't just a you make a goal and then your wife is going to follow along. This is both your individual goals as a husband. Like, what do you want to provide for your wife? And only you have control over that. Right. So you set your own individual goals as a husband of what you expect to do. But then you come together with your wife and you say, OK, what are our marriage goals? There used to be this trending hashtag called hashtag marriage goals, and it was things that couples were doing together because it was just in their relationship. Like they said, hey, we want to climb, go mountain climbing, hashtag marriage goal, going mountain climbing, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's whatever they decided in their marriage as a goal. So here's the deal. If you don't set a goal, you don't know what you're working towards. And if you don't know what you're working towards, then you're wandering. And when you're wandering, you're wasting energy, time and effort on things that will ultimately leave you unsatisfied, unfulfilled and frustrated in your marriage. 
So it's important that you set goals. So you're probably thinking, all right, Chris, what are the goals that I should be setting? Well, I won't tell you verbatim what you should set, but I'll give you some ideas. One of those goals could be we want to communicate openly with one another every day. So the goal has to be measurable. I've talked about smart goals and you got to give them a time frame, right? So open communication, that can mean a lot of different things. But most in most people's cases, open communication just means being honest and having a space carved out where you and your wife can sit down and discuss things and you're not preoccupied. And I've been guilty of this and I'm still guilty of this, even though I have time in my day that is carved out for my wife. I don't use it as often as I once did, and I got to get better at that. But see, because I have that goal and I understand what I'm trying to achieve, I now have my report card, so to speak, where I can look back and say, "Okay, I didn't do this very well. I need to go back and do this. That's all I'm getting at. All right. Have a goal or have goals and you don't have to like swamp yourself in goals. However, know what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your marriage. So that way it works out and you're moving in a direction that is beneficial to your marriage. So those are the three things I wanted to talk about. Uh, or I guess I didn't talk about temptation yet. So let's cover temptation. All right. It could be tempting to compare your marriage to someone else's marriage. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall rock climbing Libra and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. Man, let me tell you, don't do that. That's a bad idea. It's always been a bad idea. I don't know why anyone ever thought that that would be a good idea. Because you are not the people in someone else's marriage. So because something works for them, like, oh, look, they do yoga every day. Well, if you know yoga is not a thing that you have an interest in, and your wife doesn't have interest in yoga, why would you even say, well, look, they do yoga every day? Even though it looks cute and it may seem like it's something that's helping their overall relationship, guess what? Yoga is not a thing for you. Maybe going for a walk every day with your wife is a thing for you, and that works. I don't know. The point is, don't compare, don't be tempted to compare your relationship with someone else's. Now, what you can do is observe what is working in another relationship and say, okay, is that something that could work in my relationship? All right. Case in point. Hey, this couple has a date night. They go out every Friday. Well, can you come up with a date night where maybe you go out every Wednesday or Tuesday or Sunday. I don't know. Whatever works for your relationship. See, finding things that work in your relationship is okay, but being tempted to say, well, my relationship is failing because, well, this person is able to do this and that's why they're successful in their relationship and we're not. That's what I want you to look at when we talk about uh, one level of temptation. Now, the other level of temptation is way more obvious, and we understand this, and that's going to be the temptation of adultery. You know, uh, there's a beautiful woman who is interested in you, and you're having issues with your wife, and whatever the case may be, now you start to fall for this woman, or you're at least interested. X, Y, Z, you get the point. Those situations are obviously heavy temptation, and they give immediate gratification because you're like, oh, yeah, this is great. Look, but man, those things destroy your marriage. Now, 
You'll say, well, Chris, we have an open marriage. This is OK. Look, that is not OK. Open marriages are not marriages to begin with, in, in my uh, personal and professional opinion, because marriage is between you and your wife. And there's something very special about exclusive exclusivity, if I could say that word. But just think about it like this. There's this exclusive restaurant that only a handful of people get to go to. It's not McDonald's. It's not Burger King. It's this restaurant. It's so exclusive that it's it doesn't even have a name. It's just you get an invite and you and one other person can go. Exclusivity, right? You show up and it's just the two of you in this restaurant. That's going to make you feel like you are it, it. It's a whole nother dining experience. Right. Uh, and this could be more than just restaurants. But I know that there's exclusive restaurants, which is why I use that particular uh, example. The point that I'm making here is you have been invited into this amazing relationship with your wife. And to include other people into that, the sexual intimacy of your relationship is just detrimental. It it drives a void. Even if you say, no, nah, we're cool, we're mature, we can handle it. The truth is you really don't handle it because as soon as your wife doesn't perform in a certain way that the other person performs, now you're telling your wife that she is inadequate to satisfying you. And maybe she'll take that one way and you'll be like, okay, she took that the right way. But here's the deal. You're not becoming a better man in the process. You're not building your marriage in that way because you're telling your wife that she is not good at satisfying you and someone else is that you're not even married to, that you didn't make a commitment to, and that that person has no obligation to even care for you in sickness and in health like your wife does, because that's in the vows. See, you don't have a vow with this other person, but you're doing things that should only be exclusive to you and your wife with that other person. That is detrimental to your marriage, regardless of if you agree with me or not. I guarantee you that it has negative impacts to your marriage and you should not do it. And I recommend that you step away from doing stuff like that. Now, I've talked about the temptations. I've talked about the immediate reward issue. And I talked about significant long term goals because all of those things matter. The funny thing is, none of what I talked about is actually on my script. So uh, I'm just going to get back to the script but I'm going to keep all of this in because I think that this is great information and it needs to be talked about. So let's get into the benefits of delayed gratification on top of what I've already shared. So uh, the perks of embracing delayed gratification in your marriage is it's not just about self-control. It's about investing in your relationship's future. Now, I, I did talk about investing in your relationship's future. That's very very important because if you don't know where you're trying to go, you'll end up in some place that you never thought you would. But like you, you can't accidentally stumble upon something in marriage, right? You have to be intentional. And that's the reason why delayed gratification is important because you are anticipating something to happen later down the line, end of the week, end of the month, end of the year, five years down the line, whatever it may be, delayed gratification. All right. When you and your spouse practice delayed gratification, you lay the foundation for better communication instead of reacting impulsively to disagreements. You learn to take a step back, listen and find solutions together. All right. Let me unpack that. Instead of reacting impulsively on disagreements. All right. I'm guilty of this. I know many of you probably are. And we as the husband are responsible for 
providing a level of leadership where if there's a disagreement, we can't just impulsively pounce on our wife. We have to say, okay, time out. Let me hear what's going on. All right. And that's where that step back comes in. You listen to what it is that she's saying, because, again, the immediate gratification piece is to just say your piece immediately and make her feel as little as you possibly can, because you're the man and you run the house. Right. You are the man in this relationship and she better respect you. Well, if you have that mentality, one, you haven't been listening to my content for too long, and I suggest you continue to listen to hopefully change that mentality. Uh, But two, having that sort of mindset is not going to progress you as a husband in a loving and caring way that you obviously are interested in, because if you've listened this far, then you're probably interested in that now. Finding solutions together is so important. Many of you know I'm in the military and we have counseling sessions where there is the direct, there's the combined method. All right. The direct counseling session is me telling the individual, this is what you're going to do because I'm the supervisor. That usually only works when something needs to happen instantly. And I don't have much time to really talk the issue out with my subordinate. Because things happen fast paced and sometimes that happens in marriage where you just have to say, no, I need you to go do this right now because I need to go do this. And you don't have the opportunity to really hash it out and come up with a solution together. However, most of the time in marriage, we have the opportunity to come up with solutions together. And this is what we call the combined method in the military, where we sit down and say, hey, here's the problem. Here's the issue. Let's talk it out. And then come up with a way forward, right? Using that seven step problem solving method that I've talked about previously. If I remember, I'll drop it in the show notes or the description box, whatever you have. So you can go and listen to that if that's something you're interested in. But the goal here is we understand the problem and then together we come up with a solution. We talk it through, we figure it out and we work on it. And that's the goal of marriage. You should always, I would say nine times out of 10, have the opportunity to come up with solutions together because your relationship depends on it. Because if you guys can't figure out how to come together to solve problems and issues and and work things out, you're going to have a very, very hard time building your marriage down the line. So it's important that you come together and start talking about those things. I'm going to get off the the horse on that. I keep getting off my notes. It's just a, a normal thing. Um, let me get back here. Okay. So this is the, this is not only, I'm sorry, this not only resolves issues more effectively, but also strengthens your emotional connection. Let me tell you, When you solve problems together, your emotional connection, because it's a burden off of both of you, you, you both, you and your wife both learn how this is an issue, but look, we can figure this out and work together. And there is nothing that makes a couple grow better than a couple who can go through some tests, All right. Some issues, some challenges, some struggles and come out on the other side victorious. That's going to strengthen that emotional bond between you and your wife. Very, very important. All right. So this also leads to better conflict resolution, which I think is self-explanatory. So I'm not going to dive deeper onto that. But in the arena of delayed gratification, it encourages you to think about the long term consequences of your actions, reducing the likelihood of making a hasty decision uh, during heated arguments, which I think this happens all too often where you're in the heat of the moment, you say something that you know you shouldn't have said, and then It causes this downward spiral and all kinds of messy nonsense. You don't want to get into those situations. I don't recommend you get into those situations. So it's important that you grab hold of your own emotional 
being and say, okay, hold on, let me say something that that's good. Again, delayed gratification. And sometimes, you know, I, I did say that the delayed gratification should be a week, month, years down the line, but sometimes that delayed gratification could be an hour down the line as opposed to yelling because we talked about, you know, in the episode of patience that it's important that we give our wife some space and time. So when you give that space and time, guess what? You're creating that delayed gratification opportunity because down the line, you're going to be able to come together, solve the problem, and it's going to be so much better than if you just shoot from the hip, talk out the side of your neck and cause problems and friction, all that stuff. Very, very important. And that, that's what I'm saying here. Now, I won't get into studies because I think that that would just add more time to this episode. So what we really need to do is jump into these action steps. I've been given information about action steps that you could take all throughout the episode, but I do have three that I want to go into. One of them is just a rehash, but let's go ahead and jump into these. All right. The first one, prioritizing communication. Now, This is also potentially a rehash, but what you want to do is make an effort to communicate on a regular basis and be honest. This is why it's important to have those daily opportunities where you and your wife come together and you talk to each other. Now, what you talk about, there's tons of different things, but it should just be communication that you have with your wife. Whatever that looks like, just do it. Right. But you want to prioritize this. You want to practice active listening in this opportunity. Uh, Don't rush your judgment or anything like that. Just like what I've been talking about already. Remember that patience and understanding can go a long way in resolving conflicts. Now, if you are practicing delayed gratification specifically to an incident, Just remember that that delayed gratification, it really does come by way of uh, resolving conflicts in a better way. However, it's not always about a conflict. Sometimes it's about really good things, right? Like, hey, let's save up some money to go on a family vacation. And that's what you guys are talking about. That's not a conflict. I mean, I guess you could say, well, we don't have the money to go now or we don't have the time to go now. But let's plan a trip in a month, two months, three months, whatever it may be. And we're going to go on a family vacation. This is how much we're going to have to budget. So that way we can go on this vacation again. That's actually a prime example of setting goals, which is the next thing or action step. Right. So we're going to kind of transition into setting goals here. But the, the thing with this in this example, when you set a goal. And you know what it is that you're working towards. You can look back and say, did I take action steps to get us to this goal? So if you say, hey, in December, we're going on a family trip. Well, what do I need to accomplish that family trip? Well, we need three thousand dollars because plane tickets are expensive. And that's probably under shooting it anyway. If that is the case, then how much do we need to save per plane ticket or per month for these plane tickets? And maybe you'll come to the conclusion, hey, we need to save $500 a month and that'll get us there. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's probably bad math, but whatever. Public math is a challenge. $500 a month. Then what is that going to impact? Because. You haven't been saving $500 a month. So now you have to look at it and say, okay, well, what are we going to go without in order for us to go and do this? And that could be the conflict. But then you guys are solving that problem together. And when you're solving problems where it's not even really a friction between the two of you and you're coming together and solving those problems, those are actually great opportunities for building your marriage. And that's why we want to do it. All right. That's why we want to set goals. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, 
third action steps and or third action step, I should say, manage expectations. You got to manage them. All right. Realize that in marriage or no marriage is actually perfect. All right. And both you and your spouse have flaws. Don't expect instant changes. Instead, work together on your issues patiently and with empathy. Now, what I didn't add to my notes here that I just thought of right now, so I'm going to share it with you, is when you're managing expectations, you should be realistic, all right? And you have to be realistic. Sometimes, maybe you'll say, okay, well, if it costs $500 a month when you're setting this goal and you know you don't make enough to put away $500 a month, then it's like, okay, well, what else could we do for a family vacation that maybe doesn't cost $3,000? So now you are managing the expectation of the end result. And that's when you're, again, coming together and you're solving the problem This is actually really, really good. And that's the reason why you want to talk with your wife. The more you can get together, talk and plan and just start moving in a particular direction with your wife on situations like this, the better you're going to be and the better things are going to work out, at least in my experience and the people that I've coached in their experiences as well. So there you have the three action steps, prioritize the communication, set goals and manage expectations. The deal here in delayed gratification, because I really did unpack a lot more than I had scripted. um, And I think it's all good information that you can use. You can gnaw on it and find ways to apply it in your marriage. But Essentially, you don't want to just jump into the first thing you want to give your wife and yourself an opportunity to breathe on some stuff and ultimately grow in your relationship over time. Sometimes that gratification happens an hour. Sometimes that gratification happens a few days later or maybe a week, month or years down the line. And that's okay. We don't need things instantly. If you trigger yourself to get stuff instantly, the second you don't get something instantly, it's going to make you upset. So learn in your marriage how to get that delayed gratification effect and apply it well. As always, uh, I love bringing you guys the content. So if you got questions, send me an email. If you're on YouTube, because I think this is going to be a video podcast, then leave a comment down below. I am a little delayed (laughs) on getting to those comments, but I will get to the comments eventually. So if you got them, drop them there. But if you really want to get a hold of me, send me an email at thehusbandcoach2020 at gmail.com. That's also in the description and show notes. And that's the best way of getting a hold of me. I will respond to you through there. So until the next time, I want you guys to find a way to love your wife every day. Peace.